Hello everyone, Justo Christopher VFX here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a shrapnel explosion using the FumeFX and Rayfire plugins for 3DS Max. This effect can be achieved using thinking particles, but I prefer to use Rayfire for this effect. So first we've got to create a FumeFX grid. First we're going to go under Create Geometry, go to the drop-down menu, and select FumeFX. Click here, click and drag. I like to hold control, but we're going to be changing these parameters anyways. So, next, for the width, we are going to make this 1500, the length 1500, and the height also 1500. Alright, so once we've got that set up, just going to zero this out really quickly, make sure it is in the middle of our 3D space here. Next, we're going to create a sphere. So we're going to go up to here, Standard Primitives, create a sphere, click and drag, and we're going to give this a radius of 35. We're going to make sure this is exactly in the middle here by zeroing this out, and then we're going to drag so it is just above the bottom of the grid. Next, we're going to go down to the drop-down menu, select Rayfire, select Rayfire again, and then say Open Rayfire Floater. Once we go here, we're going to add the sphere as a dynamic object. Next, we're going to go over to the Fragments tab, and under here, we're going to make sure that fragmentation type is Pro Boolean Uniform. Next, we're going to want these iterations to be 30 and 20. We can leave the rest alone. Now we're going to press Fragment and let it process. Once fragmentation is complete, we are going to marquee select the bottom half of the sphere. So it looks like about half of the sphere is selected. Then we're going to press Delete. Next, we are going to create an RF bomb. So we're going to go over to Helpers, make sure you have Rayfire selected, go to RF Bomb, and click and drag. We're going to make sure this is centered. Then we're going to go over here. Make sure the size is around 75. You want to have this top arc just to be right above the top of the sphere, or right below it, just around the top of the sphere. Next, we're going to go to Frame, change this to 1, and Strength to 5. Then we're going to go over to the Physics tab of our Rayfire Floater. And then under Stimulation Properties, we are going to add our RF Bomb. Once we've added our RF Bomb, we can preview this and see how our quote-unquote shrapnel is affected by the RF Bomb. Make sure to adjust your RF Bomb's parameters to create the desired effect. Next, we're going to change the end frame to 25. After that, press Bake to solidify the animation into our timeline. Then we are going to go to our top view and make sure that at frame 25, none of these fragments are outside of the FumeFX grid. If they are, simply select and delete. Now we're going to repeat this process with a smaller sphere with a diameter of 20, and with the iterations over under fragments being 150. So, once we have both of our spheres fragmented and animated, it should look something like this. So, next, what we got to do is we need to add two object sources. So, we're going to go over to Helpers, go down to Fume Effects, and click Object Source. We're going to create these outside of the grid. Then next, we are going to go to our FumeFX grid under the Modify tab and open up the FumeFX UI. Go over to the Object Source tab, and we are going to add both of our sources. Next, we're going to add the fragments to these sources. So under FumeFX Object Source 1, we're going to click Pick Object. We're going to go over to Select by Name then select 
all of Sphere 1. Then we're going to go to Film Effects Object to Source 2, pick Object, select by name, and select all of Sphere 2. I'd like to point out that I am running at 30 frames per second, and I'm going to have 90 frames in my timeline for a total of 3 seconds. What we're going to do next is we're going to zoom in here a little bit, go back to frame 1, and we're going to marquee select the ray fire bomb and the two spheres that have been fragmented. We're going to right click and select hide selection. Next we're going to go back to our Fume Effects UI, going over to Object Source. Under Source 1, we are going to change Fuel so that by frame 15 it goes to 0. So we're going to select Auto Key, just drag down and up just to select and create that first keyframe. Then we're going to go to frame 15 and make this 0. We are going to change Smoke from 2.1 to zero by frame 20. Now going up to source 2, we are going to change the fuel from 100 to zero by frame 10, and smoke from 3 at frame 0 to 0 0.2 by frame 15. We're going to deselect auto key and go over to the general tab. We're going to make our spacing 4.2, then going over to the simulation tab. We're going to leave quality at 5, then with maximum iterations at frame 0, we're going to turn auto key back on. We're going to make maximum iterations 500, and by frame 90, we're going to tune this down to 200. We can deselect auto key, go back to 0, and we're going to change vector stride to 0.25. We're going to select Auto Key again, and we're going to change Time Scale to 2 at frame 0, and then by frame 5, change it to 1. Deselect Auto Key. We're going to go over to Vorticity, change this to 1. We're going to select Auto Key again, and we're going to change X Turbulence to 12 at frame 0, 7 at frame 15, and 2 at frame 30. I'm going to deselect Auto Key again, and we're going to change Scale under Turbulence Noise to 10, and Detail to 3.75. I'm going to scroll down under Burn Rate. We're going to raise this up to 70. We're going to change Heat Production to 30. We're going to select Auto Key again, and at frame 0, expansion is going to be 5. And at frame 5, tune it down to 0. We can deselect auto key. Next, we're going to check fire creates smoke and change smoke density to 0 0.5. Now, under the render tab, we can go down to fire and we're going to change the color and we're going to press key mode, which gives it a gradient. Add one right here. Change this to be a red color, reddish orange. Going to exit out of this, then go down to smoke, set the ambient color to a value of 23, and change the color to a slight brown. So we're going to make this lowest one almost black. Give it a little bit of red, a little bit of green. Come over here. Change it to a dark value. That's brown. Then go to the end and make it a light brown. We can exit out of this. And now we can simulate and see what it looks like. Once you have finished simulating, go back to the Render tab, go under Smoke, check Cast and Receive Shadows. Next we're going to create a light. 
So we're going to exit out of this. And we're going to go to Create tab, Lights, Standard, Target Spot. I'm going to drag it diagonal. We're going to drag the target down and the light up and try to cover the entire Fume Effects grid. Next, we're going to go under the Modify tab and we're going to go under Spotlight Parameters and we're going to shift Hotspot Beam up to 65. Now we're going to go back to the Fume Effects UI and we're going to go to the Illumination tab. We're going to pick light, select our spotlight, check multiple scattering. We're going to change multiplier to 1.5. Then we're going to keyframe maximum depth. So we're going to select auto key, keyframe frame 0 to be a value of 2, and frame 5 to a value of 5. Next, we're going to change fire strength to 80 and smoke strength to 0 0.001. So if you followed all these directions correctly, you should come out with something that looks a little bit like this. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to post those in the comment section down below. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel and give it a like. Be sure to check out my website at CustoChristopherVFX.com. There's a lot of cool stock footage effects like this one we did today for really low prices, so be sure to check that out. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to go make some really cool explosions.